Good morning. My name is Mike Fitzpatrick. I represent the 8th Congressional District of Pennsylvania, south, uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, standing here in front of the Capitol on a cold day with these assembled members of Congress who believe, as I do, that the laws are made by Congress, not by the President. And we're asking the President uh, to not go around Congress, but to work with Congress to take the 1.6 mile ride down Pennsylvania Avenue to work with other elected members of the federal government who also want to see good public policy, who want to see economic opportunity, jobs created, and good health care uh, for the people. So we're here today um, with not only other members of Congress, but also uh, an individual I'm going to introduce right now to speak to you. His name is Dr. Larry Kawa. He's an orthodontist from uh, South Florida. Dr. Kawa has um, the distinction of having filed the only lawsuit that exists uh, challenging the president's authority to use executive orders in order to waive or delay or defer provisions of the Affordable Care Act, specifically the biggest deferral under executive order, which is the uh, delay of the, uh, the employer mandate. And so uh, Dr. Kawa, with his own resources on his own time, has done what many American citizens, I believe, have been concerned about, have talked about, but he's actually done it, which is to use his own time and resources in filing a lawsuit challenging that authority. Uh, the courts um, have not wanted to hear his case to this point in time, and the executive branch has, uh, executive, uh, branch has, uh, has gone to court uh, in order to uh, inhibit his ability to, uh, to speak for the American people, as well as for many members of Congress. So with that, I'm going to introduce Dr. Larry Kawa, who will tell you about the lawsuit. Doctor. Thank you for the opportunity, Congressman Fitzpatrick. I'm humbled by the opportunity to stand here on Capitol Hill with members of Congress to represent the Constitution. The administration has left us out in the cold. Uh, we have an imperial president that has dismissed Congress and declared them irrelevant. He has said that if they will not agree with him, he will just go ahead and agree with himself as a Congress of one. And he has said that he's doing this to increase opportunity, whereas the only opportunity that's being increased is that of his own power. I would argue that he has no more right than you or I to make or change the existing laws. Uh, this, this president has opted to take advantage of the Constitution, where Article I states that only Congress may make or change the laws, and the president has an affirmative duty to enforce those existing laws, whether he likes them or not. Uh, of the 29 illegal executive actions under Obamacare, the largest and most important is that of the employer mandate. And it says clearly in the law that the employer mandate shall begin January 1st, 2014. There is nothing that can be done by executive action whose intent is to enforce the existing laws to make that work better by enforcing it at a date two years down the road. Uh, I feel that he has crossed the red line he took an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. And what underscores the hypocrisy of the situation is that it turns out the president is the one who we most need to protect it from. With the help of Judicial Watch, we have brought a lawsuit. <clears throat> and uh, we, uh, we filed this lawsuit October 1st in the Southern District of Florida. And we are here to announce today that the lawsuit has now graduated to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And uh, we expect that we're going to win this. From a practical perspective, uh, I feel that this law is something which is a train wreck. You cannot uh, both want to create jobs and love creating jobs while you punish the job creators. In waiving the employer mandate illegally, not only has he given a tax break to the wealthy on the backs of the middle class, but uh, he, has, he has done what flies in the face of the Constitution, and we will not allow that. And for those who would say that I am an obstructionist, or any of us would be obstructionists, I want to remind you of something. This is a law that the president was the architect of, that he pushed through Congress, and, Amer and America's Congress approved of. We are the one who, are, who is trying to enforce the existing law. If anyone is the obstructionist, it, it is the president who's trying to circumvent the existing law. You know, in the context of our lawsuit, there have been numerous opportunities that we have invited the president, who has often said, let me be clear, to do so. And in all of these back and forth volleys, not once has he claimed that he has the legal right to waive the employer mandate. In fact, the only thing that he's done is beg the court to shy away from, from sunlight and not have them hear, hear our case. So uh, 
in saying let me be clear, I want to point out that you cannot be, you cannot say that you are a beacon of transparency and think it is any more so than standing in a garage makes you a car. So I would, uh, I would say that for those of you that, uh, that want your country back, it's on the way. And for those of you in the IRS and the corrupt administration that intends to follow his illegal direction, uh, I, in conjunction with Judicial Watch and these gentlemen behind me in Congress, will do everything we can to, to stand in his way. And, uh, and Mr. President, the question is, how can you expect America to follow the law when you who should lead by example choose not to do so yourself? So we, we are here to say today that it comes to an end today, and uh, we hope that you are listening. I've even left my cell phone on so you could hear me. Uh, and in closing, I would say that you can keep the con you if you want to keep your pen and you keep your phone, you go ahead and do that. We will keep the Constitution and we will stop you because we are Americans. God bless all of you. Thank you for your time. God bless America. Thank you. I will now introduce Congressman Pittinger. Thank you. Thank you. Congressman. Thank you, doctor, for your great work and Congressman Fitzpatrick for your leadership. You know, in the good wisdom of, of our founding fathers, they created checks and balances in, the, in our government. We do not have a monarchy. We have a government built through our Constitution that allows the United States Congress to write the laws. The President seems to have forgotten his way. Uh, prior to 2008, when he was elected, he was a constitutional lawyer. In fact, he even reprimanded George Bush for his acts of executive orders. Yet what the president has done has been far more egregious in terms of writing policy, not just appointing people to positions, but writing a major policy that affects 20% of our entire economy, affects every family, affects every business. And this is not the right, this is not the privilege, this is not the role of the president of the United States. So I, I come here today to commend this lawsuit in behalf of the American people. And I believe that it will prevail because I think truth prevails and it is based on our Constitution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. The next speaker is David Joyce from the state of Ohio. <clears throat> Thank you very much. As a former prosecutor, I believe in the rule of law. And I also believe in our Constitution, which gives our framers purposely put in checks, a system of checks and balance, and no one is above that. And when one person goes above that and, and, and bypasses Congress to do something like this, it's a shame that doctor has to take the matter into his own hands and file a lawsuit to get what recourse should be afforded to him by our Congress. Thank you. Thank you, David. Representative Scott Perry is my colleague from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Representative Fitzpatrick, and of course the good doctor. It's indeed a shame when one of our citizens has to travel from sunny Florida to Washington, D.C. trying to uh, set the president straight on constitutional law. Uh, I would just like to remind the president of his promise when he was running for, for the presidency in 2008, when he did admonish uh, President Bush for unilateral action and said that that was the problem in Washington and he was going to be decidedly different. Well, unfortunately, he's, he has been decidedly different in that he's, he's increased the volume on, uh, on unilateral action. You know, the, the founding fathers knew that it was going to be difficult. They knew that it was going to be difficult, this balance of power, but that's how they wanted to act, us to act. They wanted us to work together through these difficulties. And this is the people's house, the House of Representatives, where we don't have a choice in this, where the president makes these unilateral actions. I mean, Jefferson, a Democrat, said, when injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. I mean, George Washington, a nonpartisan politician, the first president, warned us against these partisan uh, policies and politics, and this is what we've come to. Uh, we are just here to remind the president to work with the Congress. So let's work together and let's find the common ground for everybody, not just the common ground that he dictates to all of us that he thinks is the right thing to do. We're all working together as Americans, uh, and, and that's how we should work, and that's how the system was set up. The system works well when we work within it. And we would just uh, remind the president with that of his promise to the American people when he was running for this office and to abide by that promise. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate that. The American Conservative Union has been outspoken on our obligation to follow the Constitution. And Dan Schneider is here from the ACU. Dan. Thank you. 
Alexander Hamilton at our Constitutional Convention actually offered an amendment that would make the president uniquely powerful, that he would be able to veto any laws that came before his desk, before or after, and that he would serve for life. When President Obama promised to fundamentally transform America, I'm not sure that he had this particular goal in mind, but he seems hell-bent on making sure that Alexander Hamilton's failed amendment might become the reality of today. The American public has spoken out very clearly and very loudly that the Obamacare legislation is bad. It's bad for Americans. It's bad for their pocketbooks. It's bad for people who care about their health insurance and their coverage and who want choices. We can fix it, but we have to bring that back to Congress so that Congress can rewrite the law and make it effective for the American public. There's only one way to do that. The president needs to comply with the Constitution and do this the right way. Thank you, Dan. The last speaker before questions is Michael Pekesha. Michael is one of the attorneys at Judicial Watch who's been involved in the litigation. Michael? Thank you. No one wants to hear from an attorney, so I'll keep it brief. Judicial Watch filed this lawsuit with Dr. Kawa to make sure the president and the American people know that the rule of law needs to be followed. The law is clear. The mandate was supposed to take effect on January 1st, 2014. Uh, July of last year, the president decided that it wouldn't be good policy, it wouldn't be good politically, so he postponed it by a year. Just a couple weeks ago, he decided it wouldn't be good again, so he postponed it for some employers for another year. And, you know, it's unclear if he's going to do this again or what other laws he will choose to ignore. So Judicial Watch is here to make sure the president knows that the rule of law must be followed. Thank you.